What is happening everyone? Thanks for tuning in to KMRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. Guys, if you're new to the channel or you haven't already hit that subscribe button, today we're going to be taking a look at a new-ish portable antenna that's rated for 160 meters all the way through 6, 100 watts peak, 50 watts average, about 75 on uh, sideband, so probably 50 watts on uh, CW digital. Guys, it is the Comet Toy Box Antenna. Let's take a look today on KMRD Radio Stuff. Now I do want to give a big thank you to Mick and everyone at Comet for sending us this antenna to review. They did provide it free of charge, so we get to take a look at it. Let's dive in and see what this antenna is all about. Comet sent me a few things here that don't actually come with the antenna, but uh, this is the antenna uh, package itself. This is how it comes. Uh, they also sent along this really cool like storage bag, uh, which I'm going to actually end up using. I really like this. Kind of reminds me of like what a chef would put all their knives in. Then they sent me along this uh, counterpoise wire kit that's actually designed to hook up to an SO239, so that was pretty nice. And then they sent me this adapter kit for the ICOM 705 that allows you to hook all this up to the side of the 705 and uh, use it that way, so that's pretty cool. So taking a look at the antenna itself first, you can see we've got basically four, well really five parts to this. The first part is what they're calling the base coil. This is uh, the part that has all your taps. Uh, it's got an SO, uh, or excuse me, a PL259 on the bottom, and everything kind of connects to this. You have the base coil, and then you have, at the very least, you would need these two parts, the actual telescopic whip here, and a little jumper wire that's going to allow you to uh, tap for different frequencies here, okay? So with just these two alone, you've got 40 through 6, theoretically, okay? So if we want to get on to 80 meters... We've got this guy here, which just screws on and is just a loading coil for that. And then you'd put the uh, telescopic uh, whip there. But what if we want to get on 160 meters? Well, then we're going to add this big bad Jackson right here. So now we've got all kinds of loading coil. And then we're going to add our telescopic whip. Now, guys, I want to be very clear. This is a highly compromised antenna. So lower your expectations uh, in terms of you know, how well an antenna like this is gonna, gonna perform, okay? It shouldn't be any secret, but if you're new, uh, I was mystified by a similar antenna like this uh, when I first got into amateur radio by a different company and uh, had less than stellar results. Now, I'll tell you, just by feeling this and holding it, the overall quality feels a lot better than some of the other manufacturers that are out there. So, uh, you know, feels don't really mean much, but, it's something. Let's, uh, what I want to do with this antenna, I want to kind of go through all of the bands and uh, then actually get on the air. Because tuning it up is one thing, getting on the air is a completely different thing. So I want to see, one, can we tune it up? And two, can we actually make contacts with it? So let's do that right now. As far as tuning, I'm just going to use the internal antenna analyzer function on the Zygu G90. Now I have a BNC built in to my G90 Go box, so I am going to use a SO239 to PL259 adapter. And let's hook all this up and see if we can tune this up on 160 meters. I will be amazed if that happens. Who knows? This antenna could be like the sleeper antenna that uh, is really awesome. I'm, I'm probably jinxing it now. <laughs> but who knows? This counterpoise wire, while it's really cool, uh, is is way too big for portable operations. I don't know why Comet would make uh, I, this is probably 14 gauge wire. Let's see. Does it say uh, 16 gauge wire and there's one two three four five six of them all the same length so I'm just gonna huck that out there and Because it's designed for an SO239. I'm just gonna kind of put it underneath the BNC and just kind of make a friction connection so we can get our ground plane going, and that should be good. So let's tune it up on 160, see what we get, and then we'll go through all the bands. So here's a sweep of 160 meters. We're uh, looking at a one kilohertz bandwidth there. And we got just about a 1.0 to one, uh, look at that, 1.0, yeah, at 1.899. I mean, that's fantastic. And if we want to raise it, we can just shorten the whip a little bit. So let's see if our, uh, frequency goes up there. Yep, look at that. 
If we want to lengthen it, we can lengthen the whip. I'll be gosh darned. All right, so let's look at 80. Here's a look at 80. We're 1.0 at 3.746 right now. Here's a whole kilohertz of bandwidth on 40. We're 1.2 at 7.150. Here's a look at 30 meters for you. Now this is a whole kilohertz wide, so 30 meters is just towards the, the upper part here, but uh, pretty perfect match there, I'd say. Here's a look at 20 meters. About the best I could do is 1.6 to one. We're seeing 1.7 to one right now, so not quite as good on 20. That's kind of interesting. 17 meters, we're looking pretty much 1.5 to one across uh, the entire band there. Here's a look at 15 meters, looking really good there, 1.0 to 1 at 21,175. Now 12 meters is actually not marked on this uh, antenna, but I went ahead and gave it a shot, and I have it on the 15 and 17 meter coil with the whip. Uh, almost fully collapsed, there's only, <laughs> there's only two full sections uh, coming out, and then just a couple uh, short uh, bits of the third extension there, but... Uh, it seems to be kind of resonant there, so that works. And here's a look at 10 meters. Not too bad at all. We're getting 1.0 to 1 at 28.428. Well, I don't know about you, but that test was uh, pretty shocking. I'm amazed I actually was able to tune up on all those bands. An interesting thing about this, though, every single one of those bands, with the exception of 17 meters, this telescopic whip was shortened considerably. So I just took it off from 10 meters. There's two whole sections that are collapsed just to get it resonant on 10 meters where we were. Same thing with 160. I might have had four uh, collapsed, three or four collapsed on like uh, 160, 80 meters, uh, and even 40 meters. All of them, even, even 20 meters. It was, it was very much collapsed. So it's not utilizing the full length of this whip, which is kind of disappointing because the more aerial you have in the air, the better your signal's gonna get out. So uh, that was kind of interesting. So the next part, I am going to get on the air and see if I can activate this park. And that will be the true deciding factor of whether or not this radio is worth it. So let me do that and uh, we'll see what happens in the end. Uh, kilo two, uniform Papa Delta. Kilo two, uniform Papa Delta. Is this thing on? Nobody's hearing me. Ooh. I got a November 8 way down there. Come again, November 8. Kilo Oscar 4, Echo Alpha Charlie. QSL, I've got you about a 5-3, 5-3 into Golf Alpha. Kilo, Kilo 4, Delta India Victor. Oh, wow. Kilo, Kilo 4, Delta India Victor. What's going on, brother? How are you? Hey, Mike. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Uh, yeah, you're, you're pretty weak. Boy, it's rough. I mean, there's stations out there. They're just not hearing me. Kilo 9, India, Charlie, Papa. Roger the 5-7. I've got you 5-5, five, five. Indiana. 5-5, five, five, Indiana. A kilo Delta 9, my Kilo Romeo. 5-9. I'm afraid you're only about a 4-5. Four, 4-5 five. Four, five in the Sierra Charlie, South Carolina. 73, thanks for the activation. Kilo Charlie 8, Lima, Uniform, Bravo, you are 5x6, 56 into Texas, and you're number 10. Hey, QSL, you're about a 5'4 <laughs> in Tennessee, a uh, thing in November. Uh, thanks for the activation, Tyler, and you have a good evening. Hey, thanks for making this activation a complete one. I appreciate it. 73. Hey, Whew. All right, well, we managed to get 10 contacts. Took uh, about 26 minutes to get those 10, so... Uh, <laughs> Not gonna set any records with this antenna, but it does work. I'm gonna let you guys decide. You know, there's always a compromise. You're gonna you're gonna compromise size and form factor for efficiency. So, you know, if, if you're in a place where you can't put up a big antenna, 
this might could be your solution. I don't know. But, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely a neat little toy to have in the kit. You know, something to take with you portable on vacation if you're looking for something to, to pack down real small. You know, if you get this little case here, you can even put the, the counterpoise wires fit in here as well. So you can have all of it in here and, you know, you know, digital is probably some place that this would shine. Maybe we'll revisit that sometime in the future for, you know, FT8 portable, something like that. I suspect this probably would do better on that. I had no problem seeing signals and hearing signals. But uh, transmitting, uh, we, we didn't get any real stellar uh, reports from, from people coming back and uh, probably the biggest signal I saw was probably maybe a five by six uh, at the most. So uh, maybe we'll, we'll do a, a version two of this on FT8, but. So yeah, that is a look at the Comet toy box antenna. Guys, let me know what you think. If you've used an antenna like this in the past or if you if you used this antenna, you know, how did it work for you? Let's let's keep the discussion going on this. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. We'll see you again on another episode of KMRD Radio stuff. 73 guys.